video today, we're going to be thinking about important ions in biology, and we're going to be using that to try and plan an essay. And I am going to put together at the end for you a potential paragraph that could go into an essay on important ions. So let's have a look at a potential essay question. Uh, we've got inorganic ions include those of sodium, phosphorus and hydrogen. Describe how these and any other inorganic ions are used in living organisms. It's a really nice question. Obviously, they're always a little bit scary, but there's absolutely loads that we can talk about from the entire specification. So there are four kind of key areas of importance that you might have covered in year 12. Um, so let's talk about those first. So we could do a paragraph on phosphate ions because phosphate ions are important components of DNA and RNA. Um, and they're also really important in terms of ATP. So potentially this is actually two different paragraphs, right? You could talk about the phosphate ions in the nucleotides of DNA and RNA and forming the sugar phosphate backbone. You could also talk about the structure of ATP and the hydrolysis of ATP to release energy, but also potentially the use of that inorganic phosphate to then phosphorylate other substances and make them more reactive like we see at the start of respiration in glycolysis. Another important ion, hydrogen ions and pH. Now the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution determines the pH. You could link this to the importance of maintaining pH in cells for enzyme activity, because as we know, enzymes are particularly sensitive to any change in pH and could potentially be denatured if the concentration of hydrogen ions was not maintained to give the correct pH. The third area is iron ions. Now, iron ions are found in haemoglobin, which you'll learn about in module three. Haemoglobin is obviously a protein with four polypeptide chains, but in each polypeptide chain, there's a heme group. Each heme group contains an iron ion, and it's the iron ion that actually associates with oxygen. So we can say that haemoglobin loads with oxygen, and then it dissociates and unloads the oxygen. So you could certainly focus on the importance of iron ions for oxygen carrying in haemoglobin. Number four, we've got sodium ions in co-transport. Now I'm thinking of digestion and absorption, that module, uh, module three again. Sodium ions are used in the co-transport. If you're thinking of the small intestine and the ileum, then remember sodium ions are actively transported out into the blood to maintain that concentration gradient. So sodium ions will then diffuse into the epithelial cells carrying with them a glucose or an amino acid in co-transport. Once they've moved into the epithelial cell, they can then diffuse via facilitated diffusion into the blood so we can actually absorb those nutrients. Let's think about some other key areas that potentially we could talk about, because remember in the essay, we always say you need at least five different topics, five paragraphs, five parts of the spec. So you could certainly talk about neuronal communication because sodium and potassium ions are used in the maintenance of resting potential. So you could talk about the sodium potassium pump or you could talk about depolarization and action potentials. So, for example, I don't know, the Pacinian corpuscle, when there's pressure, which is the stimulus, it opens stretch mediated sodium ion channels, sodium ions diffuse in to the neuron. And if enough sodium ions diffuse in or threshold is reached, you will then get an action potential. You could talk about calcium ions in muscle contraction. Now, calcium ions are stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of muscle fibers, but when they are released uh, into the sarcoplasm, they will bind to troponin. And remember that causes the tropomyosin to move aside and expose the binding sites on the actin for the myosin heads. So actin myosin cross bridges can form and we can get muscle contraction. So that would be a really nice paragraph, I think, if you know your muscle contraction in detail. You could go back to your sodium ions. Now, you might think this is the same as what we had on the previous slide, but I'm focusing here on the kidney nephrons and the proximal convoluted tubule. In the proximal convoluted tubule, glucose and amino acids are all reabsorbed back into the blood. And again, that is done 
by co-transport. So we see again, sodium ions being actively transported out. So we've got a low concentration of sodium ions in the epithelial cells that line the PCT. So then glucose or amino acids can diffuse through that co-transport protein with the sodium ions and move back into the blood. So they're all getting reabsorbed. Now, if we did all of these paragraphs, we would have a fantastic essay with lots of bits, different areas of the spec. I'm gonna show you one example paragraph. Now I've chosen to focus on co-transport because I know that's a topic that we all find tricky. I'm gonna read this for you, but remember you can always come back to this video, you can pause it, you can even write this paragraph down yourself if you think it's gonna help you. So let's go, let's see what I've written. Sodium ions play a critical role in the co-transport of glucose and amino acids across the epithelial cells of the small intestine, a process which is essential for efficient nutrient absorption. In the membrane of the epithelial cells lining the small intestine, sodium ions and glucose or amino acids are simultaneously transported into the cell through a co-transport protein. This transport process relies on a sodium ion gradient which is actively maintained by the sodium potassium pump on the lower membrane of the epithelial cells. By pumping sodium ions or Na plus out of the cell into the bloodstream, the sodium potassium pump creates and maintains a low sodium ion concentration inside the cells, allowing sodium ions to flow down their concentration gradient from the lumen of the small intestine and into the cell. As sodium ions diffuse through the co-transport protein, they carry glucose or amino acids into the cell with them against their own concentration gradients. This co-transport mechanism is essential because it enables the epithelial cells to absorb glucose and amino acids efficiently, even when their concentrations are higher in the cells than in the intestinal lumen. The absorbed nutrients can then diffuse into the bloodstream via a channel protein and travel to the cells in the blood. Obviously, glucose can be used for respiration to release energy or make ATP, and amino acids are going to provide the building blocks so that we can make proteins. I focused on the iron, which is the sodium iron in this case. I am calling it sodium iron or Na plus and not just sodium. I'm focusing on the process of co-transport and the importance of that iron. And at the end, I'm focusing on why exactly this is so important for living organisms. So ultimately it's about making sure we can absorb glucose and amino acids because we need glucose for respiration and amino acids to make proteins. I hope you found this useful. We've done, I think, three of these little essay paragraph videos now. Hopefully we're going to do a few more so you can refer back to them before your exams and do some more essay prep revision. Have a go yourself. So choose one of the other topics that I suggested. So you could choose uh, calcium ions in muscle contraction. You could choose maintenance of the resting potential or depolarization. You could choose hemoglobin and iron ions or the structure of DNA or ATP or RNA. Have a go yourself at putting together a paragraph. Don't put it off, do it now. Um, and let me know in the comments if you found this video useful.